Hey, it's Patrick from JMP Cycles. Let's talk about some Makuni Carb basics. Makuni Carb is a great upgrade if you're hot rodding your motorcycle. Although a CV Carb is a really good carb, there is some hot rod stuff on the Makuni that's just not available on the CV, along with the size of the inlet. This is the smaller of the main three Makuni Carbs. There's a 42, 45, and 48. 42 is probably the most common, and there it is already bigger inlet than your CV carb, therefore moving more air in. You can add more fuel if you have the motor that's set up to do that. So uh, you're probably gonna get a little bit better uh, horsepower gain right away by moving that extra air in with the Makuni. Another nice thing about the Makuni is the throttle response. There's no butterfly in it. It's not a vacuum actuated system like a CV. So it's very quick and there are hardly any obstructions to the air as it's flowing through the carb. This one's actually off my bike and it's in need of some love. There's some broken pieces on it. And so we figured we'll walk you through it. We'll start on the outside and we'll kind of move to the inside. Before we get to that, I do wanna address one thing with the Makuni. Two things, let's say. This is a spigot style carb, just like your CV. It just pushes right on. Now, if you're going to put any kind of air cleaner on this, uh, basically you're gonna need an adapter. And what that adapter does, it allows you to run any kind of air cleaner on your bike that you can put on a CV carb, which there is a ton of. Here is the one on my bike, and here's the adapter I'm talking about. I actually left it on the backing plate. So when it goes on the carb side, there's just a rubber O-ring that sticks down on it. And then the screw setup is identical to that of a CV. So this is actually an air cleaner setup for a CV. It bolts right on the Makuni with the adapter. These adapters are about 40 bucks. If you plan on switching to a Makuni, plan on getting that adapter. But let's take a look from the outside of the carburetor and then I'll kind of work our way inside. Okay, a couple of quick things. This is our, our fuel inlet. This is the, the line from the gas tank hooks up. On a CV, these are plastic a lot of the times. Makuni is a nice metal one and it swivels. So if you need to move your fuel line, depending on how you're routing it, it's easy to do. This is your air fuel uh, mixture. And the main difference here from it's like a CV is it's on the air cleaner side, not the manifold side. So a CV, the air fuel screw actually controls it controls the fuel on a circuit that goes there. It pinches the fuel on and off, where on this idle circuit, this actually controls the air. It both ends up uh, affecting the same thing, your air fuel mixture at low speed, but this does it via air instead of fuel. This is the idle control. So idle up, idle down. On a CV, you would have a screw that was up against your throttle wheel over here on a Makuni. You have this here. This is actually pretty handy. This one kind of old needs replacing, but you can reach down and reach this really, really easy to adjust your idle. You don't have to have a screwdriver to adjust your idle. You can grab it with your hand and adjust it. No problem. As you can see, the choke cable is broke. Basically what, how the choke works is when you pull on your choke knob, pulls that little thing back out of the hole and allows uh, the fuel that's in this extra circuit here to go into the motor, add a little fuel for a nice, easy, cold start. On the bottom of the carb here, this is the float bowl, pretty standard float bowl, except for kind of like a lot of the dirt bike style carbs you have this handy dandy access here. If you want to change a main jet, you can get to it from the bottom of your carb without having to take your float bowl all the way off, which is nice. This carb is not a constant velocity carb, so it does not have a diaphragm in it. And like I was talking about before, your throttle cables are hooked right to here. And as you twist the throttle, this wheel opens the slide on the inside. And there's no lag. There's no waiting for something else to kick in to draw the slide open. This directly controls the slide. So your throttle control and throttle response is very, very instantaneous. And once it's open, there's no butterflies or anything to get in the way. Just straight shot. There's no obstruction. Even with uh, butterfly style carb, when you have the butterfly in there, when it opens, you still have the blade that's affecting the airflow where the Makuni just goes right through. Here's our accelerator pump right here. Another nice thing about a Makuni is you can adjust when the accelerator pump comes in. So how the accelerator pump works, as this comes around, you see this piece here make contact with the accelerator pump and start to activate it. And you can adjust that with this screw. So if I turn this here, you can see that piece move closer or farther away from the accelerator pump, which will either delay the accelerator pump coming in or accelerate the accelerator pump coming in. We'll take a look at the bottom of the carb. We already talked about 
easy access to the float bowl. I did change these float bowl screws to Allen's, just a little easier to deal with and you don't have to worry as much about stripping them out as you do the Phillips. So the inside of this is pretty dirty. It's a good thing we were taking it apart because it's pretty rough looking. Now the float operates just like any other carb float. As the level in the float bowl drops, the float comes down. And as the float comes down, the, fl the float bowl is running out of fuel. It opens this valve and I'll show you this valve. Okay, so as before, we have our accelerator pump rod coming down. This is our accelerator pump down here. It presses on that, and then it gives it the little squirt of fuel. This one's a little different than the CV. The CV has a post coming up into the actual body of the carburetor. You can see right here, this little squirt comes out of that brass jet right there and actually goes into that little jet right there and shoots it up into the carb on acceleration. Our float bowl valve, you can see it moving it up and down right there. And as this float drops, it opens the valve, which lets fuel from the tank ultimately flow in there and keep the float bowl full of fuel so your bike will keep running. Pilot jet is the smaller one. It's a little deeper down in here. You put these in, they gotta be snug, but they are soft, so be careful with them. And then the main is sitting on, Mikuni has like a main jet extender, and then the main jet sits right in that like extender right there. And when you get on the throttle, the bike is being fed obviously from the main jet, but the fuel is being controlled by that needle in that slide that rides up and down in there. And that needle has some amount of control on how that fuel comes through the main jet. We'll open up the carb and we'll see how you can adjust the needle to also affect how, how the bike reacts when you get on the throttle. For the top, we got three Phillips, and then we're gonna see uh, how that slide is in there. Okay, that's our carb top. And then I'm gonna roll this up so you can see when you pull on the throttle, you're lifting that slide. Something else to talk about with the slide, there's a rubber gasket on the outside of the slide, and you can kind of hear this thing clacking around a little bit. That is a little bit of a knock to a Makuni, is the pulse from the engine will cause it to rattle a little bit, depending on your motor. You can hear me tapping on that. That's, that's, that's not really my finger, that's the slide making that noise. And there's an O-ring in there that will cause that to get loose, and it'll just get noisier and noisier, which is one of the reasons I'm taking this apart. If we want to get to this needle, you're gonna have to get down in there. Um, we'll go ahead and take the needle out and show you how to get down there. So to start with, we're gonna have to bend this tab back a little bit so we can get to this screw to take it out of here. So what that lets us do is raise that slide way, way, way up, and then we need to take this Allen out right there. Don't lose that little clip that's holding the needle in. Okay, so now you can see the needle and you can see the taper. And as it pulls up out of the carb, as the slide pulls up, the taper affects fuel flow from the main jet. And you can see these clips here Basically, the higher you move the needle up into the clip or the lower you move the needle, the more aggressive the fuel flow would be. And if you start to drop the needle and raise the clip, then it affect it the opposite way. All right, well, now that I got the Makuni all exploded here, I'm gonna take this time uh, to do a much needed rebuild on this. This is a great upgrade. If you're doing motor work, big bore cam, something like that, this is definitely uh, worth the investment to your motorcycle. Hopefully our basic look here will give you some insights into tuning your Makuni when you put it on or like me doing some maintenance to it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop us a comment and go work on those motorcycles.